Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Naval War College graduation ceremony. I'm Captain John Griffin, the Dean of Students, will be serving as your MC for today's ceremony. You're welcome to take photographs at any time throughout the ceremony. We have official photographers taking pictures today, and you'll find these photos posted on our Flickr site found in the back of the program. At this time, as a courtesy, please put your mobile phones on silent or vibrate. Please remain seated for the procession. Please rise, remain standing for the arrival of the official party, national anthem, and invocation. The national anthem will be sung by musician second class Laura Carey. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets ring clear the bombs bursting in air Oh, say does that star 
Commander Douglas E. Rosander, the Naval War College chaplain, will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. From the book of Proverbs, an intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Sovereign Lord in heaven, we ask for your presence with us today. Graduation marks a milestone in the life of each one being recognized for their months of hard work and perseverance. These students have been stretched and challenged and have passed the test. As a result of their time here, may they be better equipped to lead, serving our nation and benefiting others. Thank you for their instructors and mentors, as well as their families and friends who have encouraged them along the way. Now please be with those being recognized today for their achievements and may this institution continue to do much to further the goal of peace. I pray this through the blessed Redeemer. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the members of our official party. Dr. Michael Pavkovich, Chair, Strategy and Policy Department. Captain Alan J. Abramson, Chair, Joint Military Operations Department. Dr. Jay Hickey, Director, College of Distance Education. Dr. David Cooper, Chair, National Security Affairs Department. Dr. John Garofano, Dean of Academic Affairs. Professor William Spain, Associate Provost. Admiral Guillermo E. Barrera, Colombian Navy, retired, former CNO, Colombian Navy. Rear Admiral Walter E. Carter, Jr., President, United States Naval War College. Good day and welcome to all the guests at today's ceremony. It's my pleasure to introduce the 54th President of the Naval War College, Rear Admiral Carter. Well, good afternoon and welcome to everyone. Today is uh, clearly a very special day for all of our graduating students. And before we get into uh, the proceedings today, I'd like to uh, make a special welcome to a number of our distinguished guests. Obviously, you've already seen the, our distinguished uh, colleagues up here on the, on the stage, but also uh, Major General Steve Sider from the U.S. Naval War College Foundation and Captain Retired John Odegaard. Thank you for being here today and for all your support as always. Uh, as a native Rhode Islander, it's always great to have the uh, the Rhode Island senior officers here. Uh, I'd like to think you just came here because you want to be here with us at the War College, but I want to just take a special uh, moment here to mention them. Uh, Major General Kevin McBride, the Adjutant General uh, for the uh, Rhode Island National Army National Guard, Brigadier General Charles Petraca, Commander Land Component Command, and Brigadier General David Medeiros, Assistant Adjutant General. Thank you, gentlemen, for being uh, part of this uh, time-honored tradition today. Uh, as uh, many of you probably know, uh, Kevin is a graduate here of the War College from uh, 2000, I believe, so uh, welcome back. Uh, but most especially, I want to welcome and uh, thanks all the family and friends who uh, made such an effort to come here today. Uh, for those of us who live here in the state of Rhode Island, we're used to single-digit temperatures in the morning in February and March. For, for a lot of you, you might not be. And as I know, some of you made a special effort to get here from uh, long distances. Now you may notice in your program today that uh, Admiral, Rear Admiral Pete Gumatautau is listed in there. He had originally been planned to be our guest speaker and even though Norfolk didn't get really clobbered with as much snow as Baltimore and Washington DC, he could actually not get out of there to be here uh, with us today. Uh, so uh, no worries, we have uh, probably our most distinguished guest speaker we've ever had and uh, Admiral Barrera has uh, stepped up to be part of this uh, great ceremony today. So my task right now is to introduce uh, Admiral Barrera. He graduated from the Columbian Naval Academy in 1971. He has a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering and a Bachelor of Arts degree in Naval Sciences, both from the Columbian Naval Academy. He holds a Master of Science degree in Electrical Engineering from the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School. He completed the Naval Command College right here in Newport, Rhode Island, class of 1993, at the U.S. Naval War College here. Admiral Barrera has served on board many naval ships. He commanded Riverine Patrol Boat Fritz Agali, Buitenda Gorgana, and Missile Frigate Almirante Padilla. 
He was the commander of the Colombian Coast Guard. Not many people knew that you commanded the Coast Guard as well as the Colombian Navy. He also served as the Chief of Operations for the Colombian Navy, and from August 2006 until August 2010, he served as the commander of the Colombian Navy, commonly known as the Chief of Naval Operations, with the rank of four-star admiral. Admiral Barrera has re received just about every award that you can receive uh, as a Colombian Naval officer to include the highest award that a foreign officer can receive from the United States in the U.S. Legion of Merit. Admiral Barrera retired from active duty on September 1, 2011. He came to the Naval War College in October of 2011 and has served as our CNO Distinguished International Fellow. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to introduce our guest speaker and my very good friend, Admiral Guillermo Barrera. Good morning, everyone. We are Admiral Walter Carter, President of the United States Naval War College. Professor William Spain, Associate Provost. Dr. John Garafano, Dean of Academic Affairs. Dr. David Cooper, Chair of National Security Affairs Department. Dr. Jay Hickey, Director, College of Distance Education. Captain Allen Abramson, Chair, Joint Military Operations Department. Dr. Michael Papkovic, Chair, Strategy and Policy Department. Captain John Griffith, Dean of Students. Major General Kevin McBride, Adjutant General of the Rhode Island. Major uh, General Steve Seiter, Chairman, Naval World College Foundation. Brigadier General David Madeiros, Assistant Adjutant General of Rhode Island. Brigadier General Charles Petrarca, Director of Joint Staff and Land Component Commander. Honor graduates, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Clinan, U.S. Marine Corps, College of Naval Warfare. Lieutenant Commander Dustin Lonero, College of Naval Staff and Command, Command and Staff. Highest distinction graduates, with distinction graduates, Graduates of the uh, Command and Staff uh, College and the College of Naval Warfare. Honorable faculty and staff of the United States Naval War College. At today's ceremony, we all have a task. Mine is to talk. Yours is to listen. I hope that we will finish at the same time. <laughs> For me, it's a real honor to be the speaker in this graduation. And I feel honored because you are part of an elite of human beings. You are the people that prefer serving your country, your families, future generations of this country, and humanity. And you choose that because you care because you care. That's why I'm honored to be here today in this graduation. I think it's not a coincidence that we are in Admiral Raymond Ames Spruance Hall, the quiet warrior. He graduated from the Naval War College, class of 1927. He indeed was a great and successful leader. He cared about the future of the Navy, the country, and also humanity. For that reason, he chose to be the only four-star president of the Naval War College at the end of his naval career, because he cared. In this very hall, in October 2007, CS21, the cooperative strategy for the 21st century sea power was formally introduced to 104 chiefs of the navies of the world. Why? Because they were talking here about joint 
interagency, and multinational audiences. Because we had to work together because nobody today can take care of all the maritime commons. It has to be shared. And because of that, everything starts with two conditions, trust and confidence. And you cannot build trust, as it says in the strategy, from one day to another. This is something that has to be worked along the years, along the time. Long building. And I have to say that that strategy that was inaugurated that year did not start that year. It started with a conversation with the country and a conversation with the world hosted by the Naval World College for about two years. I remember vividly here in this same stage, General James T. Conway, Commandant of the Marine Corps, Admiral Gary Rocket, who was in office for one week at that time. And I have to recognize also Admiral Mike Mullen, the first Navy officer that started working on this strategy. And Admiral Tad W. Allen, Commandant of the Coast Guard. They were having a conversation here in the stage. It was not a physical presentation. It was a conversation in which they talk about joint, they talk about interagency and multinational. And they were talking in a conversation that was a great example for 104 commandants of navies of the world. And it was great because they wanted to talk to us and get us to get together with them in the sense that if I use, I have to take care of what I use. And we are talking about the commons. Why for? In search for a better maritime environment for all. That was the purpose. Great event. And right now the Navy is reviewing that process and probably we will hear about that in the near future. All these and more transcendental events have been taking place in this very hall. Today we gather here to celebrate the successful culmination of your studies and receive your master's degree. During a full year, the United States Naval World College has been giving you education in order to be successful in your careers. You are qualified to be advisors at the operational, strategic, and political levels. But many of you will be called to be the decision makers in a non faraway future. For that reason, I can see here within you many Raymond Spruances. Your dear, you, dear uh, graduates, will be part of this elite group of leaders who will shape the world. 90 officers from the Marine Corps, the Army, and the Navy are graduating today. There are 32 gradu graduates from the Coll College of Naval Warfare and 58 from the College of Naval Command and Staff. Congratulations to each one of you and your families. And I think this is the moment, dear graduates, in which you should recognize the support, the efforts of your loved ones. Please give a round of applause for your families. You have been giving your full attention to your studies. With dedication, your efforts are showing today the results. You are prepared to see what others do not see. You are capable of seeing the whole forest and not just the trees in that forest. You can understand in a better way the strategic environment. You are ready to successfully 
access difficult situations thinking outside the box. You are prepared to find innovative, multiple solutions to complex and ill structured problems. You are strategists. Congratulations to the honor graduates and to the five highest distinction and the 14 with distinction graduates. You have been working hard. Your country and your families must be very proud of you. Graduates of the Naval War College are prepared to be the leaders of great and successful organizations. You will lead them administratively, operationally, and strategically. For that reason, you have been educated in operations, in theater and national security decision making, as well as strategy and policy and strategy and war. You have developed skills at the Naval War College to be successful strategists. As I recommended to some of you in your seminars and electives, please maintain contact with your professors. They will love to help you if you need them and will rejoice too with your success. It will also be a way of showing your thanks to them. Keep reading and updating. Today, you can carry your personal libraries in your laptops or in your iPads. With all your notes, they will be very useful in the near future. When you arrive to Newport, you have a lot of expectations. Also, you were the representatives of your services. Now, you return to your services being also the representatives of the United States Naval War College. Your mates back home will learn from your conversation, from your opinions and your analysis, the level of education you have received here, the friendship that you have been creating with your classmates, with a broader vision of the world than the one you brought here at the very beginning. You are not the same person that arrived here a year ago. And perhaps you do not notice it, but your mates will. Your friends back home will see it clearly. You will be more respected in your communities because you are now the leading experts in operations, strategy, and policy. It is a great responsibility, I would say, yes, responsibility, but a source of respect from your respective communities. But remember to be humble. Twelve of you are already in your new jobs. Some of you are returning today. Some others will spend a few days here before going back but all of you will be working very soon. You are following the path of many graduates that have received education here and will soon become commanding officers and flag officers. As a graduate of the Naval World College myself and being in contact with many successful graduates, I can tell you that this college has marked your lives forever and for good. You have now a more comprehensive vision of the world. And the critical thinking you have mastered will help you to grab much better your responsibilities with the United States, your services, your mates, and ultimately with your family. Your country has invested in you. The United States expects to receive in return great professionals who serve their country well. This is what is expected from you. If you do your part, your services will be proud of you. 
your families will be honored and you may end up as flag or general officers and even chief of your services and perhaps appointed to high level positions in the international arena. Congratulations, dear graduates. I hope this course opened for you the door of success because as I said at the beginning, you are the heroes of the United States and the world because you care. One final word to thank each and every one of the great faculty members and the superb staff of the Naval War College because you have been giving to the new graduates all your knowledge and have inspired them to be excellent strategists. God bless you all. Admiral Barrera, on behalf of the students, staff, and faculty, I thank you for your comments and your ongoing contributions to this institution. For each graduating class, one student is selected for recognition as a President's Honor graduate. This award is presented to the student who best displays the highest standards of academic performance, Naval War College activities, participation in civic and community service, and the promotion of military services in the public interest. For the College of Naval Warfare, the honor graduate for the March 2014 graduating class is Lieutenant Colonel Mark Klingon. <laughs> Along with her certificate, Lieutenant Colonel Klingon is receiving an engraved Weems and Plath compass from the Naval War College Foundation. His name will be added to the perpetual plaque of honor graduates. For the College of Naval Command and Staff, the honor graduate for the March 2014 graduating class is Lieutenant Commander Dustin Lanero. Lieutenant Commander Lanero, would you please come to the stage? Also, along with the certificate, Lieutenant Commander Lanero is receiving an engraved Weems and Plath compass from the Naval War College Foundation. His name will also be added to the perpetual plaque of honor graduates. We'll now give our honor graduates a few moments to address their fellow graduates and classmates. Good afternoon, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here today. It's truly an honor to be selected as the class spokesman for today's graduation. What a tremendous year this has been, not only for the students, but for all of our families who are able to share in the Newport experience. When we first got here, Admiral Christensen told us that the most important thing he wanted us to do was to think. And after numerous deployments during 13 years of conflict, this year was the perfect opportunity to not only reflect on what we've been through, but more importantly, on where we as a maritime nation are headed. As I stand up here today, I'm filled with a great sense of gratitude and thanks for this opportunity. Not only to the Marine Corps, but to the other services, civilian agencies, and foreign militaries who despite budget constraints, sequestration, and the continual op tempo, still make the education of their officers a priority. Second, I'd like to thank the faculty. You made us think critically about history, strategy, and the future challenges ahead. Well, you didn't always give us the grade we wanted. You gave us the feedback we needed to challenge us to be better students and ultimately better strategists. Next, I'd like to acknowledge the other students who brought a wealth of experience and insight to the classroom. 
I know there are a number of quality students who work just as hard and are equally as deserving of receiving an award and being up here today. I particularly want to thank the international students who would ask the tough questions, challenge our assumptions, and frequently remind us that the world does not view the United States the way we view ourselves. I'd also like to thank the local Rhode Islanders from Newport, Jamestown, and the surrounding area who truly opened up their arms and welcomed us into their schools, neighborhoods, and communities. You made this year a worthwhile experience for all of our family members. Lastly, I'd like to thank our families. Many of our spouses are often left as single parents while we were off charging windmills during deployments or even during our day-to-day -day jobs back here in the States. To some students who were geographic bachelors, this was yet another deployment with a hardship of separation. Even for the families who came here and were able to enjoy the Newport experience, there were many times where it probably felt like we were deployed as we agonized over research papers and the readings for the next seminar. When I did seek the attention of my wife, it was often to proofread a paper. <laughs> my wife and even my 13-year-old daughter now know more about Vietnam and perhaps China than they ever cared to. <laughs> to steal a term from Clausewitz, my wife is clearly my center of gravity, without which everything would unravel. I know I can speak for most of the graduating students when I say that our biggest thanks belongs to our families who support us and surprisingly still seem to put up with us. In closing, I'd like to quote one of my favorite sayings. It reads, the nation that draws too great a distinction between its scholars and its warriors will have its thinking done by cowards and its fighting done by fools. The current situation in the Ukraine is but one of the many strategic challenges facing the United States and its allies. As long as there are institutions like the Naval War College, I'm confident our military will have the strategists and critical thinkers needed to navigate the uncertain course ahead. Thank you, God bless, and Semper Fi. Good afternoon. First, I'd like to thank uh, Rear Admiral Carter, Captain Griffin, and the entire Naval War College staff, faculty, uh, for just providing an outstanding experience of this last year. I'd also like to congratulate my class. Um, great job well done. The, uh, the amount of talent and experience um, in this class was phenomenal, and I learned a lot from you, and I appreciate those of you I had the chance to meet. Now, believe it or not, this is not the first time I stood in front of you in my service dress blues. Um, some of you, hopefully not too many, may remember a uh, very disheveled, short, stocky, blonde lieutenant commander stumbling in the middle of Admiral Christensen's opening day talk with us. And uh, that disheveled lieutenant commander was myself. Having uh, tried to take a shortcut into work that day, I ended up stuck in the middle of some back street in Newport. Had to enlist uh, a couple patriotic Newporters out there to uh, shovel my uh, sedan out of the snow, which led to me showing up wet, late, and embarrassed to my first obligation. I was terrified. Um, so I'm really happy to have another chance to stand up in front of you in my service dress blues and show you that I can do it. <laughs> so not driving down unplowed streets in a two-wheel drive sedan was a big lesson for me. One of many I learned here. Other being that the answer to any JMO seminar question is, it depends. Another good one to keep around. But believe it or not, the biggest lesson that I learned while I was here wasn't from any of the War College staff, faculty, but from my wife, Marta, sitting right over there. And yes, I did promise her I would not mention her. Um, so I'll pay for that later. But she drove four hours to get here today, so I figured, what the hell, make it worth her while. So there I was, like many of you, at the very beginning of JMO, struggling with Dr. Vago's theories late at night. And she came down the stairs and was somehow able to wrangle that very, very large, awkward textbook. It's like 8,000 pages out of my hands and looked at me and said, Dustin, you need to learn to find balance. And just as the case, probably 90, let's say 99% of the time, my wife was absolutely right. Um, like many of you, we came here on the heels of 12 years of straight, continuous operational commitments. And during that time, I had very little control of my time and how I spent it. Um, but when we got here, Admiral Christensen, during his talk, at least the little part that I was able to make, make it to, he challenged us to widen our perspectives and to develop a thought process that went beyond 
that which would got us to this point. And I think a critical first step in developing that type of higher level mentality is recognizing a balance between your personal, professional ambitions. That's because time is precious. And I am deeply appreciative of the War College for giving me and my classmates the time to strike that balance. I was somehow able to weigh wrestling with Dr. Vago's theories and wrestling with my son's diapers. And that's not easy. I think all of us are appreciative of that. And I know as we go forward and we take on high responsibilities, knowing how to balance our lives and to facilitate that balance in the lives of our subordinates will perhaps be just as critical as balancing operational functions. So I'm very thankful again to the War College and to my wife, Marta, for educating me on both. Thank you. A Master of Arts degree in National Security and Strategic Studies will now be conferred to the graduates. Will the graduates please rise? Ramal Carter, we Admiral, I have the honor to present the March graduates of the Naval War College. Candidates for the Master of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. By the power vested in me by the Secretary of the Navy, the accreditation of the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, I confer upon you the appropriate degrees and diplomas in national security and strategic studies. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in saluting with our applause the March graduates of the United States Naval War College. Thank you, Admiral. Graduates, please be seated. Beyond the requirements for graduation, certain indiv individuals have distinguished themselves through academic excellence. For those in the top 5%, they're receiving a diploma with highest distinction. Those in the next 15% will receive a diploma with distinction. Graduates will now receive their diplomas. Graduates from the College of Naval Warfare, please proceed to the stage as your name is read. Guests are welcome to come forward to take photographs. Please try to hold your applause until all names have been read. Red Admiral Carter, Professor Spain, Admiral Barrera, Dean Garifano, if you would please rise. Presenting the graduating members of the College of Naval Warfare and their next duty assignment. Commander Byron V. Alexander, U.S. Navy, DISA, Fort Meade, Maryland. Captain William S. Anderson, U.S. Navy, with distinction, ComNav Air Force Detachment, Norfolk, Virginia. Commander Stephanie J. Butler, U.S. Navy, Tacron 12, NAB Coronado, San Diego, California. Commander Leonard W. Caver, U.S. Navy, Comcar Strike Route 10, Norfolk, Virginia. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew J. Chevalier, U.S. Army National Guard, Joint Force Headquarters, Rhode Island, Rhode Island Army National Guard, Cranston, Rhode Island. Lieutenant Colonel Mark H. Klingon, U.S. Marine Corps, number one in his class, highest distinction, Marine Forces Europe, Stuttgart, Germany. Commander Christopher G. Dobson, U.S. Navy, NATO Joint Electronic Warfare Corps Staff, Royal Naval Air Station, Yevelton, England. Commander Alexander W. Ellerman, U.S. Navy, Naval Reserve PACOM 601, Nosk, Rock Island, Illinois.
Commander Brent C. Gott, U.S. Navy, with distinction, HSM 41, San Diego, California. Commander Robert Gerstner, Supply Corps, U.S. Navy, U.S. Naval War College, Newport, Rhode Island. Lieutenant Colonel Eric Allen Gillis, U.S. Marine Corps. Commander Todd S. Glasser, U.S. Navy, Joint Staff, Arlington, Virginia. Colonel Kim J. Hodges, U.S. Army, JSOC, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Commander Pavo Holdish, highest distinction, VT-7, Meridian, Mississippi. Commander Bradley L. Kincaid, U.S. Navy. Commander, Strike Force Training Atlantic, Norfolk, Virginia. Colonel Lawrence M. Landon, U.S. Marine Corps, Headquarters Marine Corps, Pentagon, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen J. Lightfoot, U.S. Marine Corps, Marine Manpower and Officer Assignments, Quantico, Virginia. <laughs> Commander Christopher D. McMillan, U.S. Navy, CNAFDET 1094, NAS, North Island, California. Lieutenant Commander Yolanda K. Mason, U.S. Navy, Center for Personnel and Professional Development, Damneck, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Brett Oster, U.S. Navy, Surface Warfare Officer School, Newport, Rhode Island. Commander Barry R. Parker, U.S. Navy, NOSC, Orlando, Orlando, Florida. Nice job. Commander Henry Primes Pierce IV, U.S. Navy, Navy Support Facility, Diego Garcia. Captain Gregory P. Riley, U.S. Navy, OPNAV, Pentagon, Washington, D.C. Commander Thomas A. Rhino, U.S. Navy, Naval Special Warfare Group 2, Norfolk, Virginia. Commander Gabriel E. Soltero, U.S. Navy, with distinction, HSC 25, Guam. Commander Michael T. Spencer, U.S. Navy, OPNAV, Arlington, Virginia. Commander Bradley W. Story, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Naval Beach Group 1, Coronado, California. Commander Richard A. Vanderstein, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Training Wing 4, Corpus Christi, Texas. Lieutenant Colonel Ricardo Lamont Warfield, U.S. Army, Commander, Southeastern Army Reserve Intelligence Support Command, Forest Park, Georgia. Commander, Hiram J. Whedon, U.S. Navy, DNI OutNav Support, Arlington, Virginia. Commander, Chris F. White, U.S. Navy, OutNav, Pentagon, Arlington, Virginia. Presenting the graduating members of the College of Naval Command and Staff and their next duty assignment. Major Neil G. Armstrong, U.S. Army, with distinction, 1st Infantry Division, Fort Riley, Kansas. Lieutenant Commander Jonathan Lewis Barron, U.S. Navy. STRATCOM, JIFIC ISR, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Diana Concerta Blevins, Supply Corps, U.S. Navy, Defense Logistics Agency, Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Major Kirk J. Bush, U.S. Marine Corps, Maritime Advanced Warfighter School. 
Lieutenant Commander Philip Kasia, U.S. Navy, VFA 83, NAS Oceana, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Benjamin D. Cohn, U.S. Navy, with highest distinction, Joint Planning Support Element, Norfolk, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Kim DaCosta Azar, U.S. Navy, State Department, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Christopher S. Denny, U.S. Navy, Commander Naval Air Forces Reserve, NAS North Island, Coronado, California. Lieutenant Commander Timothy A. DiPietropolo, U.S. Navy, Joint Staff Logistics Directorate, J4, Arlington, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Adam Drayton, U.S. Navy, U.S. Cybercom, Fort Meade, Maryland. Lieutenant Commander Patrick M. Zekan, U.S. Navy, SOCOM, Tampa, Florida. <laughs> Major John D. Fay, Jr., U.S. Army, Rhode Island Army National Guard, Cranston, Rhode Island. Lieutenant Commander Brian Joseph Felony, U.S. Navy, U.S. AFRICOM, Stuttgart, Germany. Lieutenant Commander Mitchell H. Finke, U.S. Navy, with distinction. U.S. CENTCOM Joint Intelligence Operations Center, McDill Air Force Base, Tampa, Florida. Commander Paul Flores, VAW-112, Point Magoo, California. Lieutenant Commander Eric Charles Frandrup, U.S. Navy, EOD Unit Mobile 11, EOD Mobile Unit 11, Imperial Beach, California. Major Jason M. Gallagher, Gallagher U.S. Army, Fort Stewart, Georgia. Lieutenant Commander Paul Real Jaguer, U.S. Navy, Patrol and, Patrol and Reconnaissance Wing 2, Marine Corps Base, Kaneohe, Hawaii. Lieutenant Commander Leonardo Giovelli, U.S. Navy, Surface Warfare Officer Schools Command, Newport, Rhode Island. Lieutenant Commander Patrick Allen Griffin, U.S. Navy, Navy Operational Support Center, Buffalo, New York. Lieutenant Commander James Arthur Guimond, U.S. Navy, U.S. Africa Command, Stuttgart, Germany. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Joshua A. Hammond, U.S. Navy, with distinction, PEP, Portsmouth, United Kingdom. Lieutenant Commander Victor A. Hill, U.S. Navy, U.S. Stratcom, Jiffix Space, Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. Major Jason C. Honeycutt, U.S. Army, 173rd Brigade, Vincenza, Italy. Lieutenant Commander David P. Hearn, U.S. Navy, U.S. PACOM, Camp Smith, Oahu, Hawaii. Major James O. Johnson, U.S. Army, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Lieutenant Commander James Mitchell, Kenter, U.S. Navy, United States Northern Command, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Lieutenant Commander Jedediah Kloppel, U.S. Navy, U.S. Navy, Carrier Strike Group 8, Norfolk, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Jennifer Lynn Larish, U.S. Navy, ONI, Suitland, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Dustin T. Lonero, U.S. Navy, with highest distinction. Tactical Training Group Pacific, San Diego, California. Lieutenant Commander James L. Martello, U.S. Navy, Expeditionary Strike Group 3, San Diego, California. Lieutenant Commander Justin T. McCaffrey, U.S. Navy, with distinction, STRATCOM, Omaha, Nebraska. Lieutenant Commander Daniel S. McClure, U.S. Navy, NORTHCOM, JTF Civil Support, Fort Eustis, Virginia. 
Lieutenant Commander David L. McDevitt, U.S. Navy, U.S. Cybercom, Fort Meade, Maryland. Lieutenant Commander Charles N. McKissick, U.S. Navy, Assistant SecNav Financial Management, Arlington, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Stephen James Miller, Supply Corps, U.S. Navy, U.S. Naval Reserve. Lieutenant Commander David Anthony Pacinich, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Commander U.S. SOCOM, Adil Air Force Base, Tampa, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Joseph A. Pomerer, U.S. Navy, VFA 106, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Daniel W. Robeson, U.S. Navy, Office of Naval Intelligence, Suitland, Maryland. Major Jeffrey D. Skaggs, U.S. Army, number one in his class, highest distinction, Attaché Transient Detachment, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Daniel C. Short, U.S. Navy, U.S. Test Pilot School, NAS Patuxent River, Maryland. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Matthew C. Somerville, U.S. Navy, Defense Logistics Institute, Monterey, California. Major Richard R. Steele, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction, 1st Tank Battalion, 1st Marine Division, 29 Palms, California. Lieutenant Commander Sean Abram Stein, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Kyle B. Thomas, U.S. Navy, OPNAV, RPN, Arlington, Virginia. Major Kendall C. Wells, U.S. Army, 1st Armored Division, Fort Bliss, El Paso, Texas. Major Jerry Lee Wood, Jr., U.S. Army, 3rd Cavalry Regiment, Fort Hood, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in a round of applause for our graduates, honorees, and their families. Rear Admiral Carter will now issue the charge to the graduates. Admiral, if you would. Okay, folks, we're getting close. As the president of the uh, U.S. Naval War College, I, I get to say the final few words and uh, just leave you with a couple of parting thoughts. But before I do, I want to thank uh, Admiral Barrero for uh, coming up here and giving us uh, the wonderful words today. Uh, meant a lot to uh, all of us here, uh, faculty and staff, as well as the students. So thank you very much, sir. It is now my honor to bring these proceedings to a close. Graduates, each of you departs this college more knowledgeable about your honorable profession, more in tune with both the responsibilities and the rewards of selfless service to the nation, and intellectually refreshed to address the challenges of tomorrow. I challenge each of you to follow your own ethical compass and ensure that those who work for you, who work with you, and for whom you work respect and protect the worth of every individual they encounter. <coughs> Families and colleagues, thank you for supporting your students as they participated in the intellectual journey that brought them here today. Your love, encouragement, and devotion helped them maintain a proper balance between mind, body, and spirit. College faculty and staff, today you once again witness the results of your labors here at the finest war college in the world. This group of impressive graduates benefited greatly as you skillfully crafted and delivered a superior educational product. Even while dealing with an unprecedented series of bureaucratic hurdles and disruptions, you never lost your commitment to our deserving students. Thank you all. And finally, to summarize what this year has been all about, I cannot do better to quote from a speech made by our founding president, 
for Admiral Stephen B. Luce, who spoke about the purpose of this great institution when he said, and I quote, attendance here will serve to broaden an officer's views, extend his or her uh, mental horizon on national and international questions, and give him a just appreciation of the great variety and extent of the requirements of their profession, unquote. I trust that we've accomplished the task Luce set out for all of us well over a century ago. Good luck, Godspeed, and I wish each of you fair winds and following seas. Thank you all very much. Chaplain Rosenner will now deliver the benediction. Please stand. Let us pray. Eternal Father, for these men and women, a rigorous and challenging academic year is now at a close, but their voyage continues. As they go from here, serving on land, sea, or air, at home and abroad, may their knowledge, skills, wisdom, and friendships be fully utilized in maintaining peace and security. Enable them with honor, courage, and commitment in all things, and protect them as they serve, granting them safety and success. We also ask that you watch over those who serve today in harm's way. Please be near to their families and to those recovering from the effects of war. Now bless these men and women as they go forth to do great things. Thank you for the service they render to our nation. Please be with them and their families as they depart for new destinations and challenges. Through the one who saves, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of the official party. Thank you all for your attending. Thank you all for attending today's ceremony and graduation. This, this concludes the ceremony. <laughs>